I kind of finished my body and I told you I'm going to work more at home, which means that this will shrink even more. And uh, yes, I can work uh, when I have the whole thing assembled as well, no, no problem. But in case when it's done, I think, oh, it's way too, too small, I can add more. So that's the good. So after the, the body, I'm going to go to the face. Now, total choice here uh, on how you work. I have this thing that I need to see the personality of the character I am creating. So I try, when, I, when it makes sense to start with the face, I actually go and look for the eyes first. I need to see the expression. In this case, we start with the body, but next will be the face as a whole. So I can see the personality of that lamp and I go from there. Now, you may think for you doesn't make a difference. That's okay. So, so you can go to the legs first. There is really not an order that you have to follow other than starting with the body. So I'm going to pick up some black for the face. So here on the face, show, show from here, please. You can see that I have this part of the face and here. I can create a ball and insert the black. That would be okay. But I'd rather have like a sausage of black and put the white around. And then I will round up the nose later. I think it makes it easier to create this. So that's what we are going to do. So I grab some wool, not a lot. Same thing that I did before. I put tuck the, the ends in so I don't have a lot of fiber coming out. And I create that sausage. So I roll. See, I have a good size here. I will tuck this in. So this, the, I don't need to felt both sides of this piece here. And why? Because one of them will be inside the wool, and I want it to felt with the wool, so I leave it loose so it felt easier. But the other side, the side where I really have the face, I need to felt well. Okay, so let's do that. So I start with that, always the, the part that couldn't roll. So it's like sewing that to make sure it stays in place. And then I go around. Again, this is a round piece, so it requires me to keep moving all the time. Right, so we don't lose that shape or flatten one piece. Now, this part here, I really don't need to, let me see if I can show you. Again, it's the problem of, you will have to forgive me, is sometimes you cannot see, but I really need to keep my fingers. <laughs> uh, but you don't need to felt too much because you can work this piece once you have the white on it, right? It's just en enough for you to have the basic shape. Don't you love that sound? Yeah, especially while we're watching TV, trying to focus, and you just hear... Like yesterday? In the back the whole time. <laughs> and there was a murderer yesterday, which made it even worse. So uh, the rule tells you never do this watching TV. But that's how I make all my pieces. Okay, so I have something already, a little squishy, but I can put the the white part now and start having the shape of the face. I like to have assemble and then work on getting to the final format. So basically you loosely create each part, but then you put them together and then you hone in on each, each body part. Body, basically. Because I want to see the whole thing. I mean, it, it's, it's more of a personality thing than, than a rule or, or anything else. So I put around and I will close this first layer and yes, it's not going to be high enough. That's okay. I'm just putting the first one. And I put something. Now this part here that is the top of the head, you are going to choose how fluffy you want to be. It, it can almost be unfelted if you like the, the result of it, right? So now look that I, I am sewing very lightly to the black part around it, right? So I have more defined the face. I'm going to show you in a second. Let me go around here so you can see something that I have because it still doesn't look. That's the other part, especially with needle felting. We are creating something out of something else that doesn't have a form per se. So you, you understand that the beginning, it's always frustrating. No matter how experienced you are, no matter how many pieces, uh, you just need to be in peace with that. Because when you look, so let's look here. It's not what you want. It's not, and 
I think actually this is a very good exercise. It also teaches us how to deal with emotions, believe it or not. So when I look at this and I compare to this one, you know what usually on a class will happen? Oh, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at, at needle felting. I'm not good at what... It, we criticize ourselves like this. It's amazing. Uh, but we, we fail to understand that it's a process. I have full control over these pieces here, and I can make it look exactly like this if I choose to. Or I can, you know, just turn it around because different sheep have different personalities. But it's the beginning of the process, and it's always frustrating. It's never like we want it. So what do you have to do? Keep going. Keep going. Keep poking. Why, why quit? Why say you are the one that is not good enough to do this and quit? We, we tend to do this in life quite often. When we say, no, 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 I can't step up can be on top of my game and this is going to become exactly what I want and that's what's going to happen. So you see here that I have a long nose and very short uh, head here so I grab more wool. I'm going to tuck the, the ends a little bit so it just makes it easier and I, I have to decide which one is the top. And this is going to be the top for me and very fast I have a better head still far from the what it needs to be but you see that you have a better head so get get used to this because sometimes you know when you start something you don't know if you're going to be good at that that's the point uh, you have to try more than once and you know shahar i like what you said about it being very forgiving uh -huh. you can easily add and remove wool and shape it and reshape it and make make it look exactly how you want yeah, it. it it's a matter of patience not of ability yeah exactly right? so so you have to keep going and saying okay what could i do here so now for example i already have more of a head the way i want so i'm coming to the top of the head and poking so it creates more space because think on a real lamp you would have more space here to have the eyes and everything else and now See, more of a head, still not there, but now I, I know that I can, I can work this nose. So here, even though the nose is long compared to my other ones, I kind of like it. See, it, it gave me a personality maybe of a grumpy sheep, I don't know, mm -hmm. right? Hey, while I do this, uh, everybody look, uh, is looking that I'm using this uh, almost white wool and I use it a lot. Can anybody tell me what's the name of this wool? What type of wool you're going for when you're using? Because this is the one you use the most. So if you attended yesterday, you know the answer. Let's see. Let us know what kind of wool she's using. Yep. This basic white one. So now I'm going to work a little bit on the black and I have decided that this one I w I'm, I'm not going to go for the round, round, round one. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to allow it to be a little more prominent. But I still am going to tuck in a little bit. Okay, because it's kind of crooked at the moment. And then I'll work on the position that I want. So the way I see, and again, I suggest every time, even when you're making whimsical uh, characters, that you have a picture for reference. Here, I'm not using a picture because I actually have other finish, finished pieces that I, I can use. But for example, if I'm going for a, a ram that has a bigger nose, I might want to look at a picture just to know if I should be placing this lower, if here is okay, if I put the mouth, you see. There, there are many decisions that you need to make if you, if you need to change a pattern. So I'm going to make some in the tension, like if I had a, a mouth here, it's black, it's very hard to see, but so I'm making the Sh mouth. Shahar, while you're making that mouth, Judy said Cory Dale. Ah, uh, this one is not Cory Dale, Judy. The black one is. You're right on the black one. And thank you for coming back. I know you were here yesterday too. Um, the white one. The black Tell one is Cory Dale. What is the white one? And it's more and of it a could, type well, of wool rather than a, 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 yes, a could, breed of sheep. It of can sheep. be Corydale. She's right. It can be. I actually don't know which the breed here. So she's looking for the type. But the type of wool, if you were going to buy this online, what would you type? That's what I want to know. But it could be Corydale. So you, you, technically you are right. 
So guest 251 said Cory Dale, but there are many other wool breeds that would felt as easily. Exactly. Yes, exactly. But tell us the type, not of necessarily the white the breed. one that you go for. Haha, -ha, challenging. Oh, oh, Barbara oh, 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 said oh, oh. core wool or Yay. Cory Dale. Exactly. So Corydale exactly. is the type of fiber you're using. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Like I told you, no, no expert on sheep here. But when you're buying online, this is the core wool, which means that it has not been worked much. So many times you find vegetable matter. Uh, or if it has been carded, I think it has been carded once. But uh, you find the, the vegetable matter. So it makes it a cheaper type of wool for you to buy. And that's the one you create in most, in most pieces on the, on the core of the piece. That's why you call it core, core wool. But oh. it could be this breed or another one. I actually, when I buy, I, 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 for this one, I just look for core wool. So Shahar, oh, guest 251 said, also called a cross bat. I think that means a carded bat. Thank you. The carding part I'm trying to learn, but yes, you're totally correct. You, 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 it's a cross bat. Like if I got, for, just for those that were not here, this is the, Cori it's not Coriander. Cori Coridale. Why? I, I'm going to raise those sheep. So you see that is a cross bat where you can actually not see where the fibers, let me show here, that the, where the fibers are going. You see? It's hard to see. If you get a merino top that has been carded probably multiple times, you can see the lines. You can also feel it's a lot softer, so it's harder to, f to needle felt. It's great for wet felting, though. Jonna so said, and I think I pronounced it correctly, said core top. Core top. So these are the, really the keywords that you have to go after when you're going for this type of wool that you're going to use a lot, so it's good to buy in a large amount. It's the one you, you go for And the I most. really like what you said, Shahar, earlier. Like, you use the core wool for the base, for the majority of the piece, uh -huh. and then you use the other ones basically to do the finishing, to add the color. But if you're going to have a, a gray body, you don't need to necessarily make it all, all gray. No. You can use the core wool and then use the gray to cover it. Because the difference is if you buy a whole bat of this for about, what, like I said, 10, 14 bucks, and this one will probably cost you two to, to four dollars per ounce so I, I believe i have here one ounce or two something like that right so it's a lot more expensive mm -hmm. uh, in any color okay so i kind of have the face i'm looking for at least at this point in time and i'm going just to choose the the side that is the bottom to be to flatten a little bit just a little bit because i don't want to uh, needle felt the bottom too much because i'm going to do what attach to the body Gotcha. Okay, so let's find where my body went. And Here. while you're looking for your body, guest uh -huh. 821 said the yellow is a roving. Thank you. I guess we have a lot of spinners <laughs> and probably weavers here. The roving. And when I buy in the store, I buy, I, I type merino top, but you exactly, it's the roving because it has been carded several times. Again, I'm, I'm, I did join a spinning guild to see if I can learn about that. Okay, so now I want to join this with this so you want to put the head attach the head to the body is usually a good idea <laughs> yes right? even though if it was a snake did you know that you can cut the, the head of the snake and they both will be alive for a few minutes yes i think it's just how the nerves are that what that's what you think but the other day i was <laughs> watching that video site that you find online and the guy cut the head and he was holding, so you have the tail, and the head, the head bit him. No. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, I don't know. I don't so, know. just to make it sure we don't like zombies, we could make zombies lamb. Oh, and... They and, would look good. Oh, okay. But, Jonna said I pronounced her name right. Good job. No one usually ever gets that. My oh. name is Nashla. I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, first of all, I need to find the position. Let me, let me find a place where you can see well. Here. Uh, you, I need to find the position for this lamb, for the head of the lamb. Why? Come back to the lamb for me, please. If I put too much here, it looks weird. It looks more like a duck. See? So I'm going to go in about a third of the body, and then I place the head. So I had the, the, the chest here that is nice with lambs. You see? So you have to make that decision. If I put here, it really looks weird. It could also be a chick, see? Here, 
more of a duck. So one third for the lamb would do. We, we are still going to work all that. So how do I, what do I do to, to work the head? Well, I have a few options. I can sew, let me find a place for my hand. I can sew around with the needle, right? And tie. I can also start from here. I can also, this is my longest needle. You don't have to, to have a different one, but I can do this, make sure, see, now it's in place. It makes it easier for me to work. I would do the following. I would do five or six times with this needle. So I'm inserting from that fiber top. from the top. Then I leave it here just to make, because it makes it easier, make sure it's not going to poke me on the bottom. And I go with the needle and now. So now you got another needle. So yeah, you the use normal the one, one the 38. At the top just for it to stay in place. And then with the other needle, you're sewing the edges. Yes. Um, many times, especially on a bigger piece, I will use this longer needle. I know a lot of people don't have it. So that's why I'm doing with the 38. But I will because it goes really deep into the fiber. So I know I'm really sewing. So more or less, Shahar, do you know, do you happen to know by, by memory the number of that longer needle? No. Okay. I don't. But you can see... It's much longer. It's much longer. So, and Not this only that, the, the, the barbs itself, can you zoom in here? Uh, you will see that they are thicker. And that will, do you think, so if I understood correctly what you mentioned yesterday, the longer needle will have a smaller number, so it'll be some, a 20 something. I really don't know the number. Let me put my hand here. Here you can see. See? It's a lot longer and it's thicker than the other one. So this, on this side is the 38, it's the workhorse. This one's a lot longer. It's not as easy to find the long one. That's why I'm avoiding. But look at, look one thing. So at this point, I just went around. So it's safe in place. It doesn't mean it's ready. Okay, because I can pull it out. Oh, oh I just decapitated the little lamp. Right? Easy to pull. So now, we, need, we know it's not good enough. We have to go back and start doing this more and more until it's really there. So when you pull, of course, with, with the wool, if you pull, if, you know, you ask your husband to come and pull the head, he will put the head out. <laughs> it, it, it is repositionable in that sense. But you want to make to a point that offers a lot of resistance to, to being pulled, okay?